When you're building an overland rig, you have to do two things. Step one, you have to have a great base and platform, the truck. And we have that, we have the super tremor. But step two is, you need the actual camper. So I'm right here at Four Wheel Campers in California, and we're about to put it on the truck. I cannot wait to see this rig come together as a whole. Let's do this. On this episode, I'm gonna show you how to prepare your truck for the camper, how to install the camper, how the camper is made, every feature on this four-wheel camper's hawk, and a road trip MPG. But wait, there is more. We're introducing a new partner, Ridge Wallet. At the end of this video, I'm gonna give you some clues on how you can go out there, join our adventure, and find the wallet. Hey, check it out. This is gonna be our new home on the Super Tremor on No Pavement Needed video series, which is a series where we go across country on dirt on the Trans-America Trail from the East Coast all the way to the West. Before we can get the truck camper onto the truck, we gotta remove the tailgate, unfortunately. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to carry the tailgate home to Colorado, so let's do this. So the four-wheel camper has its own power system and it needs to be connected to the truck for a couple of reasons. First of all, the camper has its own lights and it also has a battery system on there and it needs to be charged from the truck when the truck is running. So they're also gonna wire a connection to the battery with a breaker system. It's gonna be really nice. And we do have dual batteries on this truck, dual alternators. So I'm excited. Heavy duty, off-road rig. Oh no, my brand new bed. It has to be done for wiring and also mounting the camper to the truck. And it just goes through the fender, by the fender? Yeah, so it comes, the drill, yeah, it goes in between the fender and the, the wall of the, camp, of the truck, goes down to the top of the frame, and then we just follow the existing wiring harness all the way okay. and zip tie it to that. It's on top of the frame, on the back side nice. of the frame, okay. so it's out of the way. Nice. And then it comes up in the corner of the firewall right here, so it's, you know, protected all the way. And it's being charged basically using it. Yes. Okay. Oh, it's getting so close, I'm so excited. They lifted up the camper in the air, and right now they're trying to measure the height for the truck so we can back the truck under it and then button it down. I cannot wait. This trailer is using an internal mounting system. So if you're used to this truck uh, campers, you may have seen sometimes chains holding them down outside of the bed, and it goes into the uh, brackets around the bed. Well, this is not the case. It's actually mounting inside of the bed into the floor, so it's kind of a more of a clean look, uh, and it's really popular right now. So this is how it's done. There are actually hooks, four of them, in the floor of the bed now. And here's where the wiring is now, in the side. And it's dedicated wiring for the camper to connect to the truck. I had an older 1991 camper, and I'm noticing on this brand new one, the attention to detail is just superb. I mean, there's these bump stops, uh, the quality of the construction. I can just tell that there is a lot of inherent quality built into this. I want to learn everything about the four-wheel campers, and I got the man right here. Robert, can we walk me through the plant and explain to me, because you have a big sign that says world's best campers. I want to learn why that is. So we have control over just about every aspect of the camper. Uh, the only things we, we buy out are raw materials, doors, windows, appliances, uh, and some you know, awnings and things of that nature. 
but all of the structural components of the camper we have control of inside. All right, well, let's kind so, of show some of the components. This is the wood shop area, and there are some wood components that are a part of the camper. Okay. Most of it is aluminum, and we'll show you that as okay. we get over there. Okay. But the wood components are cut in this area. So we're entering into the welding department. So this is like the structure, the main structure this of it? Is, it's exactly right. So all of our campers have an aluminum structure to them, okay? So you get lightweight, you get better structural integrity and the ability to put up with the demands that off-roading puts on products. And then over here is where we have the floor pack, which we saw being produced in the wood shop department, being wetted up with the frame. Right. Can I lift it? Uh, you can try. Yeah, just grab it, grab wherever. Okay. Yeah. I mean, a, a, a weak guy can lift one side of it. Yeah. Yeah. And this, okay. is, a, this is a this is the largest one we make, so it's a Granby. It's it's pretty okay. big. And behind us, up on the second floor, up there is the upholstery department. Okay. And so they start on at the same time. We're standing on the assembly line right now. We have a couple feeder departments that feed product in and this is this is the assembly line here okay. okay so this is where the camper starts to look like what you see on the road uh, so here you can see that we're starting to put in some of the cabinetry so here we see the roofs uh, starting to be put on. This is the liner material. Again, we make this ourselves in-house. Uh, it's a uh, rubberized canvas, if okay. you will. So for, for most of our seating, we have a metal frame in here with, with uh, foam on top of it. And again, longer lasting, better quality. Uh, and then we, we finish it with these. These are your splits for your bed, so there is no, uh, there's no metal form, but these are the splits for the bed that nice. you've okay. made out. Okay. You know, really to sum up your question, of why is this the world's best camper? Um, it's a combination of two things. It's, it's a combination of the design and it's a combination of our employees and the craftsmanship and the pride that goes into making these. And I don't say that lightly. Every, every company, I've been involved with many, many companies throughout my career, and every company says they have pride of ownership and pride of workmanship and all that. And I have to say that at this company, uh, I have seen the greatest pride and workmanship uh, of any company I've been associated with. Okay. This truck has a custom Carly suspension, off-road suspension on it and they built the Deaver Springs specifically to carry the weight of this camper. And I wanna see exactly how much it squats because it's supposed to preload the springs and the shocks are specially tuned just for this. So we're starting at approximately 48 inches. Remember, the stock height was 42. So we're already six inches in the air, but I wanna see how much it comes down. Okay, so we're about just over 46 inches. So that's almost two inches of squat, which I think is exactly what we wanted. Yes! Guys, we're using best of the best components. I could not be more excited. The truck and camper have met, and we're gonna secure it. But the truck is now level. So the custom suspension system, the tires, everything else are working together. And now we should have a beautiful ride because the shocks are tuned for this exact weight and this exact setup. Now we can go 2,000 miles off-road, I think, with no issues. This is a fairly large camper, and here's a little demo of how the top goes up. If you raise it, you're gonna wanna push up on the silver knob and that gray piece of wood strip up there at the same time. Together? Okay. okay. Together, okay? And if you go too fast, you'll feel the sweet spot. You feel the sweet spot? Okay, and if that sits? Okay. Yeah. And then what you're gonna do is not go to the standing position, and there's a strap attached up there on the back side of that, pull it out, gotcha. push that over center, 
Heart. Nice crisp push. Heart? Yep. Now wrap the strap around the knob and bring it back up to the snap. Hmm. Okay, at the front, you're going to want to get your shoulder kind of like this. Arm, shoulder push uh -huh. up first. There you go. And now you can use the bar to, to go the rest of the way. It's very easy. It has those uh, shocks that help it come up, those struts, and boom, in a few seconds you can extend your top. We offer 6'4 ceiling heights, powered fans, front and rear options for powered fans if needed, thermal packs. This front dinette seating arrangement allows for more options as far as people being inside and relaxing, there's more room. If you have children, small children, this converts into a bed. King bed slide option, actually you'll have two different options, three different options actually for sleeping. You can keep it in the actual slid in position. You have a 48 by 77 and a half sleeping area here. If you choose that you need more room, This bed could be slid out to a queen, and then you can still allow for sleeping underneath. And if you do not have anybody that is sleeping underneath, we can pull this out even further. And provide you with a king sleeping platform. Stove, these are glass top, flush mount, Dometic stoves. Dometic also has the flush mount glass top sink. Uh, we've upgraded our refrigerators in the compressor series. We used to use Dometic refrigerators. We've now switched over to Isotherm. They're a much more efficient, smooth running system. Reefer fan. So if you're getting into the 80s and 90s, what you would do is you would flip this switch on and in the cabinet behind this refrigerator, there's a fan that will help evacuate a lot more of the heat that's caused by the compressor. Okay. Even though the fridge has a fan on it, this is an extra step to make it run more efficient. On the rear here, you're gonna have floodlights that pop on in the back here, nice. okay? You have exterior down lights, which on the four corners underneath the lips, you have down facing lights as well. So you have that added option. This interior floor light, which is here is another option for the night. Okay. okay? And this is another exterior side light option as well. Above here, you can see our uh, floodlights. These are the groats. They're bright. They're very bright. Don't look into them at night. You'll see white spots for the next couple of days. Yeah. Okay. It also has these down facing lights that I was explaining too. They're oh, LED lights on all four corners here. So I see, I see some footholds or handholds. Absolutely. So these can be used for a couple of different purposes. Mainly people that have like a Yakima rocket box on top will use these wall steps to access the rear of the camper or if they're strapping down canoes or paddle boards, it makes it more accessible. We provide a couple of provisions to keep the door from denting if you accidentally leave that down when the door is open. And the door can be locked this way, right? The door can be locked. So I'm gonna show you this really quick. It just comes in. Goes into the receptacle. Uh, we offer a standard deadbolt on this door as well which is here. The factory door handle also has a deadbolt in it, which is there. You can separate the screen, so you just pull this here. Propane tanks. You have dual 10 pound vertical tanks. They're a little over two and a half gallons per, pe per tank. This door here is just the back side of the refrigerator. Uh, we really don't put anything in here. This is just there for ventilation purposes only. Secret cubby. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, the good news just keeps on coming. Look at this. I got a little kit. I got an ax and a shovel. If I get stuck somewhere or I need to cut my way through the Trans America Trail, I can do it. As part of the package, I have this hitch mounted step to get in the camper because this truck is very tall. There's an issue though. I have a two inch shaft here and a two and a half inch receiver. So. I'm gonna go get myself a, an adapter. The guys here at Four Wheel Campers were amazing. I'm getting on the road again, and I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of a MPG loop on the way from here in California to Colorado because I want to know exactly how the fuel efficiency is going to be affected for a long trip. 
So stay tuned for that. As part of this video, we're gonna figure out exactly how efficient the truck can be with a camper. We have a number for the truck stock, about 15.5 MPG. We have a number for the truck with the lift and big tires, 37s at about 13.3. Let's see how much the fuel efficiency drops with a camper. If you've been watching this series, you know that we did another fuel efficiency loop with this truck, of course, and we used 87 octane, so I'm gonna continue to use 87 octane. And this is a 34 gallon fuel tank. And we're gonna get a reading here um, coming from California on the way to home to Colorado. Oh, all right, 30 seconds. I'm gonna top off and we'll see exactly what we get. Alrighty, let's go. Yes, we made it to Colorado. I'm so happy it was a long trip. Let's get the final number. Hey guys, I've made you wait long enough. Here's how you can get involved and have your own adventure. Throughout the No Pavement Needed video series that's coming up, we'll be hiding a package very similar to this. It includes a CFL No Pavement Needed t-shirt and also a surprise gift from our partner the Ridge wallet. This is a very high quality wallet. It's very lightweight. This is aluminum, black. They also have different colors, titanium, carbon fiber. You can put up to 12 cards. You can put your money in here. It's a very high quality, very uh, desirable uh, little gift. I'm gonna hide it along with my with a t-shirt and my card. So you can either text me You can either text me or email me an image of you with the Ridge Wallet or maybe even wearing a t-shirt. And the first one is gonna be easy. I'm gonna hide it at our favorite place of all in Colorado. I'm gonna leave this with the Kirk. They're open during daytime working hours, so don't show up early in the morning or late at night. And first person gets it and email us, send us the image, okay? of you with the Ridge Wallet and uh, the package. All right, here goes. Well, there you have it. All you have to do is go inside. Well, first of all, find the general store, go inside and tell the uh, attendant at the counter that you're looking for TFL truck, no pavement needed package. If you are not first and you cannot get it, don't worry because you can use the link below in the description of this video for a discounted rate on the Ridge Wallet. Thanks guys. Oh, that's gonna take a while. This fuel is not being pumped very fast and we got about 32 gallons for a 34 gallon tank to fill up. But guys, this camper is a good companion. It's not very loud on the highway, not too much wind noise. The truck is very stable. It rides better with this weight on the suspension because it's meant to. Overall, a very pleasant experience. 30 seconds as always. Gonna wait to top off and get the final number. Let's do some math. Total distance on this overland journey with the camper 964 miles and total gallons used 84.424 gallons so let's do this 964 divide by 84.424 equals whoa 
it's not too bad. 11.4. So 11.4 lifted truck, giant tires with a camper. 13.3 giant truck lifted without a camper. And 15 and a half MPG stock truck F250 with a Godzilla. So there you have it. Now you know exactly how far you can go with a setup like this. And guys, go back to tfltruck.com for more news views on real world. Super Tremor, no pavement needed reviews. Next time on No Pavement Needed, we're taking the big Ford and the camper on a shakedown run on the grueling white rim trail near Moab, Utah. And the Jeep Gladiator also comes along. <laughs>